me know when everyone's ready. Ready. Okay, guys, as of 1030, we are officially done with our search of the hospital. We did not locate the suspect inside. Therefore, this is now turned into more or less a statewide manhunt. We have this ge gentleman's picture. We would like anybody statewide to broadcast this man um, on any, any of their television platforms, Facebook platforms, whatever you have. We do want him in connection with an attempted second degree murder that happened here at the hospital. We, we're going to keep our command post here. We have everybody that could be here is here right now. We have Louisiana State Police. We have FBI. We have a uh, ATF. We have the U.S. Marshals. We have sheriff's departments from all around northwest Louisiana, and they are, we are working a combined investigation, and we, we're, you know, we're going to continue to search for this man until we find him. Our, our headquarters are going to stay here. If y'all want to remain here for further updates, I will give them to you as we go. As of right now, though, I can tell you he is not in this building. We have had multiple SWAT teams search this building from basement to, to roof, including crawl spaces in attics, and that's what took so many hours to do. The man is not in this building. Angie, we've been told that he was last spotted in Monroe, Louisiana. Could you confirm that? I cannot confirm that right now. Is there any reason to believe um, that he could be local, still in Shreveport? He could be, but remember, this man is from Farmerville, Louisiana. So, I mean, uh, I, you know, obviously we're going to shift our efforts east and south. We also know that he has some associations in South Louisiana. But uh, as of right now, we can't confirm that he's left our area. We just can confirm that he's left this building. What's the condition of the patient right He's non life threatening injuries. He's going to be fine. Angie, so many units out here right now, a lot of manpower, um, not only keeping you all safe, but the workers inside. Talk about what it took to keep this environment safe today. Well, you know, we, our specialized units and our patrol officers are very good at what they do. They came here, they acted immediately. They, you had officers that were going to work at the police academy, they were going to work at other parts of the, you know, in the investigations office. They heard this go out and responded to the scene, never even went to their duty station. They formed react teams. They immediately entered this hospital and addressed this as an active shooter situation initially because that's how we received it. And then they continued. You're going to see some of the same patrol officers that started here this morning work throughout the day. They're exhausted. They, uh, th that's an extensive search. This is a huge building. You guys, uh, if you go around it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I mean, it takes a lot. It takes a, and it takes a combined effort. And it takes the citizens that have come up and reported things to us, called in, and we appreciate all of that. Everybody, all the neighborhood associations that's working, putting this information out. All you guys who have just, y'all been great, you know, in, in getting this broadcast and being here with us this whole time. And it really does take a team effort to get it done. Our, our guys did a tremendous job today. Is there any idea as to what sort of weapon was used by the gunman? We're not going to release that right now. You spoke earlier and said, sorry, we, you spoke earlier and said that um, appointments have been moved to King's Highway. Is that still underway or is this area back open? No, we're, they're going to continue to keep this closed for now. Uh, so any emergency OB or, or um, pediatric emergency, regular appointments have been canceled. They need to relocate to Oshner's King's Highway to receive treatment at this time. And they will update y'all later um, as to when they get back open and, and go in here. But just for safety measures, getting everything, you know, this is going to take them a little time to get everything re recollected here and get back to business. Angie, did the uh, suspect and the victim have a relationship? Uh, the preliminary information was that they did, but we do not believe at this point that they did now after so the ongoing this is investigation. Random? That's how we are treating it, correct? Okay. Angie, you said that this is now uh, a statewide manhunt. Who is now handling this investigation? All of us. We've been, uh, those agencies I mentioned earlier, they've been in it since the beginning. So we're all involved in this. We have the FBI. We have the state police. Every agency in Louisiana right now is on high alert for this guy, and they're helping us to try to take him into custody. What about the public? What should they know about this guy? They should know that he's dangerous and don't approach him. Is there any idea as to what sort of vehicle he could be driving? We're not going to release any information right now as far as vehicle information. Um, we have his vehicle here on scene. Uh, I think we've impounded it already. But um, uh, he left here on foot, I can tell you that. Angie, any word about hospital security? How was this man able to enter a working hospital and go up to a floor for this even to happen? Well, okay, so, you know, the clothing description I gave you was that he had a jacket and blue jeans and a, and a, a muscle-type shirt on. That can conceal a lot. You know, hospital staff, they're here to treat people. They're not always going to be on high alert for someone to come in and start shooting people inside their hospital. They're treating patients here. So, 
I think it's it's completely foreseeable that someone with a heavy coat can walk into a building with a with a you know a, dis, a firearm concealed somewhere, and do anything they want to. So I don't I, I don't I don't want to uh, sh uh, shed any shadow on the hospital staff here. I think they acted appropriately. They did what they what they had to do to keep themselves and their patients safe and well. And I mean. Things like this happen. People can stick a gun in their pocket and walk into a hospital. Guys, I mean, that's just, that is what it is. Is the victim an employee at the hospital? I don't know that. Okay. I just don't know that information. I can't give you that answer. And you said you will be here readily to give us updates here. throughout this process. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be here. Uh, I think they're going to keep the command post here for some time. I'm going to be coming and feeding y'all the, the information that I get as permitted by the multiple agencies that are involved in this uh, in this manhunt. That's what it's turned into, is a manhunt for Daniel Cole.